I got something new that should make on location video a little easier. It's a wide angle lens kit to supplement my Canon R800. So I'm just going to rip it open here and put it on so you can see what a difference it makes. Oh, I guess it came with a lens pen. That's cute. It's actually, it's technically it's a kit, not just a lens. And a little cleaning cloth there. Oh, there's an adapter ring. And I think the reason for that is I think that this company, uh, it looks like it's a Vivitar. I think that they make only one type of lens and then they just adapt it to all sorts of different cameras. There is one of these little uh, lens cap keepers, but uh, I don't think I'm going to use that. It doesn't seem like me. I usually just pocket the cap. Okay, here it is. When I ordered this, I swear to God it didn't say Vivitar on it, so I thought it was just some ultra, ultra Chinese brand. But Vivitar isn't exactly the, you know, they're not a Lamborghini of lens manufacturing, but they're, uh, they're a name. Yes, I just used a triangle file to open that. It's what I had at hand. Okay, don't judge me. Right, this is a lot bigger and a lot heftier than I expected. It uh, comes in this little leatherette carrying purse, little drawstring bag. Uh, again, this is this is way better than I expected. I, I, I gotta go check. I think I paid 15 bucks for this. I expect it to be trash, um, but it actually already feels really solid. Um, I thought it would be very lightweight, maybe even like plastic elements or something. Doesn't seem too bad. Um, you know, metal chassis. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's aluminum. So that's great. Um, it actually has a rear cap. We'll screw off rear cap. Uh, so the front cap is a press-on. It's not a it's not a snap-on, but it comes off fairly easily. That's nice. So my belief is that this will not screw on. Yeah, it's actually too big to screw on. So it's better than being too small. Um, if you're not careful, there are unscrupulous vendors out there who will sell you a adapter, or at least this used to be the case back in like the early 2000s. They'll sell you a converter, like a teleconverter or a, a macro converter or something that's actually too small for your lens. Uh, they'll say it works, but it actually comes with a step down ring and you have to crop the resulting image. But again, that's that info is a decade out of date. I, I don't know if that's still true anymore. I don't know if anyone's that that nasty. Okay, and for what it's worth, this is quite a step up. That's the one side and that's the other side. So that's that's an increase of quite a few millimeters. 43 to 52, so that's that's nearly a 10 millimeter step up. That's that's a big step, but it's, like I said, better than the alternative. Okay, now the one thing I'm going to say is, and I'm going to look at the resulting video from this to see if this is true, but uh, the adapter ring is actually covering up the microphones a little bit. And that's a little concerning, because if it actually cuts down the audio quality, uh, then that's going to be a no-go. Having listened to the audio during editing, I don't really notice a difference, so I don't think this was a legitimate concern. Okay, so now, let's see what it looks like. Jump cut. Alright, so that's how much of an increase we get, and uh, yeah, I mean, looking at that from here, I'll have to look at the resulting footage, and maybe I'll A, B, back and forth between them. A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. I'm pretty sure that's a decent increase in the angle of view, so... Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with this thing. I, I think it'll solve my immediate problems as far as shooting outdoors and shooting in the car and that sort of thing. So I found that when I was shooting interview style shots in the car, um, where it was me and Daria both talking, anyway, we were trying to get each other in the shot and it was very, very hard without putting the camera all the way back on the dash. So I, I get no respect in this household. Hello. Anyway, I think it'll work. I think it'll solve my problems. And for the price, which again, I'm going to double check and I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I'm not getting paid for this, by the way. I'm just going to give you an ordinary Amazon link. I, I'm not doing a, a referrer link. Uh, that shit is super greasy and I don't intend to ever do it. Oh, and let's not forget, I got a lens pen with this. So let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a, um, yeah, it's got a little brush on there. A little pad on that end. I thought there might be some sort of like cleaning fluid in here. It's about to make a huge mess, but no. So here we have a round-ended felt polishing pad, and then here we have a triangular. Well, technically it's... What is it? The, the name of that shape that is the Wankel engine rotor shape? Anyway, um, so yeah, that's that, and um, I don't know, it looks pretty hanky. Uh, and let's just see...
Yeah, okay. Uh, and then the brush. It seems like a sort of a janky kind of product. Like, it's got this clip on here, and it looks like the clip is going to break as soon as you try to actually clip it to anything. I'll bet you anything that's going to snap right off. And the, the whole thing just has that low-quality ABS plastic sort of look to it. I mean, they didn't even take the flash off. There's a casting flash here, and it, the, they, they didn't even bother sanding it down. So this is a $1 item. Uh, certainly shouldn't convince you to buy this lens kit just for that. Okay, and just for kicks, I think we should do a couple of tests. Uh, these aren't going to be super precise, but they're not supposed to be because this is meant to be used for photographic purposes, not for, you know, scanning books or anything. So, if we go over to the right, and then we go over to the left, distortion from here, at least on my preview image, looks okay. Alright, in truth, it doesn't. If you look at my eyes in the middle, because that's a pretty good high contrast location, you'll see that they look fairly sharp. But on the left, they look kind of blurry. On the right, they look absolutely terrible. There's pretty clear spherical aberration in both places, which is not surprising, because these simple one or two element converter lenses are not very good in terms of optical quality. And from my understanding of optics, they just don't have enough elements to really do a good job. So it's not surprising to me that this is kind of cheesy, but it is kind of a disappointment. However, I think for the purposes of filming stuff in public and like interview shots like I was talking about, it'll probably do just fine. You do have to be aware, though, that there are going to be some pretty bad focus fall-off issues. It is multi-element, but uh, usually these wide-angle adapter lenses are pretty bad in that regard. They usually have pretty bad distortions, so I wouldn't expect much. And this really is something you would use because you have to. I don't intend to leave it on the camera. It's, it's something that I'm going to use if I'm in a situation where I need it. Finally, I'm going to try zooming in, which normally on this camera is pretty damn sharp. Uh, and let's see if there's any drop. Okay, so again, uh, that looks pretty reasonable from here. Now I'm going to take the adapter lens off and I'm going to try and replicate the same image. Okay, yeah, looking at my program monitor, this looks much sharper without the adapter lens on there. So I have the feeling this really does cut down on resolution quite a bit. So probably not a good thing to use in a situation where you need a really crisp image. The final thing I want to note, by the way, the Amazon link I'm going to provide will take you to the listing I bought this from, but my guess is that that's one of those listings that is deliberately generic. So yes, I got a Vivitar, but if you order one of these, you might get a HMC or a China Optical Pro. There's no telling. The company that sells these is probably some fly-by-night. They don't give a shit about the reputation of their customers, and they're just buying these things from whoever's selling them cheapest on any given day, and they're going to send you whatever they have. So if you order three of these, you're probably going to get three different brands. Just be prepared for that, and... Amazon has a very, very flexible return policy, which typically I consider to be pretty gross because it is leveraging capitalism to make capitalism even worse. However, in this case, you'll be using it to protect yourself against other, more unscrupulous capitalists. So feel free, if you order one of these, and you get one that's even worse than what I just showed you, uh, go ahead and just send that bastard back and order another one. All right, that's it. Thanks.